Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my How to Design a Website tutorial. This is maybe more aptly named How to Fix a Messed Up Web Design. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the process of fixing what you see here on the screen. Now, I use Google Chrome. A lot of people use Firefox, but I'm going to use Google Chrome, so I'm going to use Google Chrome. And basically, what I do is inside of Chrome, I go to View, and then I go down to Developer, and then I go down to Developer Tools. Basically, what this allows me to do is to try to hone in on exactly what's going on. Another way you can do this is to right click and click on inspect element which might work out a little bit better for you. All right, so basically what this allows me to do, and if you can't see this, view it full screen, because there's really no easy way for me to increase the size of this. As you can see, as I'm drifting my mouse up and down the screen, it is highlighting different parts of the screen. But what we're gonna fix here first is the positioning on this feature content slider and this other jQuery slider, and fix all the little errors that are in here. And I'm also gonna show you how to make it cross browser. So I'm gonna act like I don't know how this is divided up, and I'm just gonna continue to drift my mouse down and see how things are being highlighted. And this is exactly what I would do if I had no idea what I was working with. And I notice as I come down into the Coda slider wrapper area that I'm highlighting the featured content tool. So that is the guy that I want to center in on and fix. And also while we're at it, let's also fix this guy down here. So I just continue to slide my mouse down and then I notice as I get down into the scroll pane area, which demo wraps around, that this guy is going to highlight or surround the jQuery slider that I have down here. So if I wanna increase the margins on those guys so that they center, I need to look for demo and code a slider wrapper. So I jump over into style.css, which you can now see here real big, and I'm just gonna scroll way down to the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna put in my edits. So I'm gonna put in my edits, so it's real easy for me to make sure that I see what I've changed in this guy. And if I flip back over into the developer tools inside of Chrome, I see that Coda Slider Wrapper is a class, so that means I need to precede it with a dot. And Demo is also a class, so I need to precede both of those with a dot. So I just got to remember Coda Slider Wrapper in my head. Jump back over into here and go dot coda dash slider dash wrapper and I also have to remember the other one was demo now if I want to change the margins on these guys very easy I just go margin dash left and I'm going to guess and say 30 pixels and if that's moving over 30 pixels this demo needs to move 30 pixels as well let's file save it see if I got it reload it and you can see they moved over but not quite enough so let's take it to 35 pixels and see if that looks right reload and that looks very very centered for me all right so that's looking good well now as I'm looking here I also see some other errors as you can look here you can see that there's a difference between this top bar which makes a line go across here so this is bad so I'm gonna jump back into jQuery and try to figure out exactly what's causing that So I'm gonna switch back over into Google developer tools and try to figure out where that error is coming from. So I just move my mouse around here on all of these different divs and look for what could possibly be causing that error. Another thing I might want to do is if I click on resources, it's actually going to show me different textures that are being used on screen. And this is kind of like guessing. I'm looking here at middle texture and I'm noticing that, yes, this texture here is kind of interesting and it could potentially be causing me a problem if it is not repeating correctly on the screen. So I'm just flipping through all these different things and looking for things that could be potential problems. And let's just say that my hypothesis is that this middle texture is not repeating properly. Well, we got to go and actually check it out. We also have to figure out where exactly middle texture lies inside of my styling code. So I'm going to jump over into style.css and I'm going to go F and it's middle underscore texture dot jpeg and let's see where that's located okay it's located in art page background middle texture and is it located anywhere else no as you can see here all right so if my hypothesis is correct that means that i may be able to get rid of this issue altogether by just changing how the background is being repeated so let's say i don't repeat it downwards but i just repeat it from left to right well, I can change that just by going repeat dash X and let's file save it and see if that changes anything. Reload it and sure enough, that fixed it. So now what we have here is that middle texture that was being used is not being duplicated underneath and you can see that it's a nice, smooth, really nice transition here. So everything's looking pretty nice there. 
So let's jump back over into elements because we got some other problems here. Mainly being this, I'm gonna zoom in here. If you look right here in the Coda slider, there is a curve here and I don't like that curve. So I'm gonna try to figure out what is causing this curve in here because I want everything to line up straight. And also another problem I have is this little guy up here is not centered. So we gotta try to figure out exactly where those guys are. So all of those lie inside of my demo div over here on the right side of the screen. And chances are really good as I look across here, UI-corner-all surrounds all of this. So I'm gonna to wanna to look in that code for UI-corner-all, and I'm actually going to write that down. It's all hypothesis, really. I'm just guessing where the errors may lie, and then I'm later on gonna check the code to see if I'm right. And I'm opening up all these little boxes here, and I'm just drifting over all these little boxes down here to try to figure out what the name is or the div that surrounds that little bar there. I just keep opening these up and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling until I get to that name. Now I could just do this inside of the code. Maybe that would be easier, but this is kind of the way that I just like to do things. And I know now that as I'm highlighting it, that I'm getting very close to it. And there you are. UI slider handle pops up on my screen. So I'm gonna take a pen, I'm gonna write down UI dash slider dash handle, and I'll know that I need to look for those two very specific things inside of my code to fix all these errors. So let's open up that code. And I know that I'm working with my JQ slider. And I also know that this styling is coming from the fact that I downloaded the overcast style inside of jQuery. So I'm gonna go into overcast inside of my CSS file and go to this jQuery-UI. This is imported and I'm guessing that this is where the errors are gonna lie. So again, I'm gonna do a search. I'm gonna look for UI-corner-all and see if that pops up. And sure enough, there it is right there. Now I'm gonna go through all these and I notice that every single corner radius is defined inside of this guy. Well, if I don't want corner radiuses at all, and that's all that's going on here, I'm gonna decide to just come in here and just get rid of everything. And I'm just gonna comment everything out. And I'm gonna file save and see if that's getting me where I wanna go. And you can see, now there's no corner radiuses. Okay, so that fixed that error. That's looking really good. Now I need to fix this guy. So inside of here again, I'm gonna do a search this time for UI-slider dash handle. I'm going to go next. And there it is right there. Let's see if it's anywhere else. Oh, yep, it's down there also. And I'm also seeing this is where it's being positioned. And it is moving it up instead of down. Let's go through here and see if it's anywhere else. So I have it here positioned on the left. This is the left positioning. And this is the top positioning for that handle. Let's just try to get rid of that negative and see if that corrects the problem. So that's gonna move it down. Whenever you have a positive number inside of top, that means down 0.3 EM from the top. And again, I'm just testing this. And after a reload, you can see that it is properly in place. So that's how I was able to fix those real nice and easily. Let's move over here and I can see there's a little bit of a space there. So let's jump over into my jQuery prod slider.css code, which defines what goes on inside of this guy. And I see here that my width for demo, which surrounds the whole entire thing is 483. Let's take that up to 485. Reload, and you can see now that the bottom jQuery slider is exactly the same width as the featured content tool. So, really quickly fixed all those different things, and you may think, wow, your job is done, but it is not, because now we're going to check this to see if it works cross-browser. And I previously had mentioned the Adobe Browser Lab, which is free, and what it allows you to do is to check for cross-browserness. So, I just imported my web page into this guy and did a reload, and if I come down here, you may or may not be able to see that this guy down here, all these buttons are all messed up inside of Internet Explorer 6. So, so I have to go in and I have to fix all those. Well, how do I do it? It's really not that hard. Remember back previously inside of header, .php. I'm going to revisit this whole entire thing. We scroll down here. I created a separate style sheet that would be used only if Internet Explorer 6 was being used. And I created another style sheet that would be used if Internet Explorer 7 was being used. So now what I need to do, if I want to make this work inside of Internet Explorer 6, I just need to go to style.ie6.css. I'm actually going to do this inside of WordPress. So I'm going to go to my web page. All right. And if I want to edit this directly inside of WordPress, I actually have two steps I have to go through. I go through two installed plugins because I have a firewall, WordPress firewall that I use. I need to deactivate that. If you don't have that plugin, definitely get it. It'll really help you with security. It's free also. Then I need to go under appearance and click on editor. 
And then, remember, I'm going to be doing edits on the style.ie6.css file. So I clicked on that, and here it is right here on our screen. And again, we're going to scroll way down to the bottom of this guy, and I'm going to put in my edits. And so you can see it, I'm actually going to do it over here. And then I'm going to figure out exactly what I'm working with here. So let's zoom in again so you guys can see it, figure out what these buttons are called. And I'm going to use Chrome again to figure those things out. So inside a demo, I'm going to open up all these little boxes, and then I'm going to roll over these until I zoom in on exactly what I want to be able to fix here. And as you can see, there's product name. That's something that I might want to fix. So I'm going to take a second here, and I'm going to write down prod name. And all these changes are only going to affect Internet Explorer 6 and 7. It won't affect anything else. Prod more info button. Well, yep, as you can see there, that's something else I'm probably going to want to change. Prod more info button. And then prod add to cart. Yeah, that's something else I'm going to want to change. Okay, so I know that I need to just basically move these guys around and then hopefully it'll all work inside of Internet Explorer. So let's jump over into Browser Lab again. And also I see here that the image is not aligned properly. So, and that is called prod image. So let's also go and write that down, prod image. All right, so now I know what I need to style. So come down inside of here. So open up our little text editing tool. And we're just gonna copy and paste once we do this. And I'm gonna go prod more info, but do some styling on that. And then I'm going to go dot prod add to cart but and then I'm going to go the product which is the picture of the product and I'm going to move those guys around another thing Internet Explorer doesn't like pixels quite as much as it likes EMs so we're going to do a lot of our editing based off of that fact all right so let's open up browser lab and the first thing we got is prod more info button there's more info so we need to move that over to the left side of the screen so you're just going to go left and then let's say that I want to move it, I don't know, 4 EM, just guessing. And then add to cart. Well, that definitely needs to be move over to the left also. Let's do a left. And then because it is overlapping that button, let's not have it go quite as much. Negative 3 EM. And then the product itself, position it relative. And I want to bring it down from the top, 0.5 pixels. And let's copy this, jump over into my theme editing and paste it in there. Let's update that file and jump over into Browser Lab and reload this. Okay. Oh, you can see that the button for the more info looks good, but the add to cart does not. So we're going to have to fix that. And the picture here looks perfectly fine. So we need to move the add to cart away from there. And actually, the more info button is maybe over a little bit too much. So let's go negative 3.8. And then for this guy, it looks like it needs to go positive because it's all moving based off the position of the button that is to the left side of it. So I made those little changes there. Copy and paste my changes in. Update file. And then jump back over into Browser Lab and hit Reload. Browser Lab is terribly slow, but it's the only tool that I have that works as well. So stuck with it. And there you go. So everything's looking sharp and tight and everything's lined up here real, real nice. So fixed up everything there. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm actually going to turn this whole entire thing into a working shopping cart. Now, of course, I got to go into installed plugins, reactivate my WordPress firewall. And up next, this guy will become a working shopping cart. And as you can see, it has products pages. Since I'm logged in here, if I click on add to cart, it's automatically going to throw those different products in here. It's going to allow for checkout. It's going to allow for everything. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.